morning. Welcome to morning prayer. We're just going to light our candle to remind us to remind us of the presence of Christ here with us. The light of the Lord be with us this morning. Let me pop some reading in our comment box. <clears throat> so we have Psalm 149, Hosea chapter 1 beginning at verse 1 through to Chapter 2, verse 1. Hopefully that will help you. And uh, we're still with St. Paul and his first letter to the Corinthians. This morning it's chapter 8. Our prayer for Christian unity. Let's have a sip of that. for you, prayer for Christian unity, and uh, I, I'll give you the link in case you have more than one screen, so you can have more than one image open. So this is for anyone who would like to follow the word from the church window. We're happy that you're here and joining us this morning to just listen in and add your prayers as we go through, just at the start of the day really, it's nice to carve out a little bit of time. I can see a number of you really lovely. Good morning Evelyn and Carol, good morning Ashley, thank you. I can always say hello to you in the comments, I just uh, share the light that you're, even though I didn't actually see the light being with you, it's nice to know you see the comments. So welcome, and if you're joining us for the first time today, special welcome. Um, we are the parish of Charlie and Simon Christ in the Diocese of Durham, and this little service is here at 8 o'clock at the moment, Monday to the 11th of October. So let me have a sip of tea. we begin with our meditation which takes us down into worship you can listen in again or you can join in when you think of us in it be still and know that I am God be still and know Be still and know. Be still. Be still. So I welcome you this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your light springs up for the righteous, and all the peoples have seen your glory. Blessed are you, Sovereign God, King of the nations. To you be praise and glory forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. As the sun of righteousness dawns in our hearts, anoint our lips 
with the seal of your spirit, that we may witness to your gospel and sing your praise in all the earth. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, blessed be God forever. And our song of joy to the Lord. For be joyful in the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and soul. And I'll just say the name of God. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O oh God, that our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Stand now to our psalm. Psalm 149. And there is a refrain, and it is, Sound praises to the Lord, all the earth. Sound praises to the Lord, all the earth. Alleluia. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praise in the congregation of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name let them sing praise to him with timbrel and lyre. For the Lord has pleasure in his people and adorns the poor with salvation. Sound praises to the Lord, all the earth. Let the faithful be joyful in glory. Let them rejoice praises of God in their mouths and the two-edged sword in their hands to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples to bind their kings in chains and their nobles with fetters of iron to execute on them the judgment such honour have all his faithful servants. Alleluia. Sound praises to the Lord, all the earth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. We've moved on from the prophet Amos now, and we begin this morning with the book of the prophet Hosea. Chapter 1, verse 1. The word of the Lord that came to Hosea, 
summer fielding, in the days of Queen and Silas, Joshua, Ahab, and Hezekiah of Judah, and in the days of King Jeroboam, son of George of Israel. When the Lord first spoke to Hosea, the Lord said to Hosea, Go, pick for yourself a wife for whoredom, and have children for whoredom, for the land commits great whoredom, by the sword and the rod. So he went and took Gomer, daughter of Zibleam, and she conceived, and he bore him a son. And the Lord said to him, Name him Jezreel, for in a little while I will punish the house of Jehu for the blood of Jezreel. And I will put an end to the kingdom of the house of Israel. On that day, I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. She conceived again and bore a daughter. Then the Lord said to her, Name her Lo Ruhama, for I will no longer have pity on the house of Israel or forgive them, but I will have pity on the house of Judah, and I will save them by the Lord their God. I will not save them by bow, or by sword, or by man, or by horses, or by horsemen. When Goma had weaned Lord Ruhama, she conceived and bore a son. Then the Lord said, Name him Lord Amram, for you are not my people, and I am not. The number of the people of Israel shall be like the sand of the sea, which can be neither measured nor numbered. And in the place where it was said to them, You are not my people, it shall be said to them, Children of the living God. The people of Judah and the people of Israel shall be gathered together. And they shall appoint for themselves one head, and they shall take possession of the land, for great shall be the day of Jezreel. Say to your brother, Amram, and to your sister, Ruham. Tracy, it seems very, very low, is it? It should be, let me just check the settings for you. Let's see, let me just see. How's that? Oh. Oh, silent in Ireland too. Is that better? Is that any better for you? I've gone back to the microphone on the computer. Not much better. Oh dear. Right. Well, let's. We don't want a quiet morning prayer, do we? Hold on one second. We're going to try something else.
<clears throat> so how is this? Is that any better for you? Is that any louder? That's better. That's good. Right. Slightly better. Oh dear. Oh dear. I'm turning everything up my end. You can hear me in Ireland. Fantastic. That's good. Brilliant. We don't want a mumbling vicar, do we? Absolutely not. Um, so where do we get to? We've just had Hosea. Um, and now we'll have our song of the new Jerusalem. <clears throat> there is a refrain at the very beginning and at the very end. And this is the refrain. Above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. Arise, shine out, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Though night still covers the earth, and darkness the peoples, above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. The nations will come to your light and kings to your dawning brightness. Your gates will lie open continually, shut neither by day nor by night. The sound of violence shall be heard no longer in your land or ruin and devastation within your borders. You will call your wall salvation and your gates praise. No more will the sun give you daylight nor moonlight shine upon you. But the Lord will be your everlasting light. Your God will be your splendour. For you shall be called the city of God the dwelling of the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Above you the Holy One arises and above you God's glory appears. Our second lesson is from 1 Corinthians 8 as we continue to hear St Paul's advice to the early church. Now concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge. But anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven, or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom are all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom we are all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, who, are, however, who has this knowledge. Since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol. And their conscience, being weak, is defiled. 
Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you, who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So by your knowledge these those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their falling, I will never eat meat, so that I may not cause one of them to fall. Here ends the second lesson. Good morning, Jamala. <coughs> Our response to scripture this morning, or worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations that the Lord is king. Or worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tell out his salvation from day to day. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among the, all peoples. Or worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Time now for our Benedictus. The Song of Zechariah. There is a refrain at the very beginning and at the very end. This is the refrain. This is the Christ, the chosen of God, the one who will bring healing to the nations. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. This is the Christ, the chosen of God, the one who will bring healing to the nations.
time now for our prayers. Morning Jaw, welcome. We have our prayer for Christian unity. Shall we begin with that? I can't see any requests in the comments box. And I have something to share with you before you go, so please don't dash off. So in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Lord, you invite us to share together in your love. You call on us to see the beauty of each other's expression of the faith and to see the unity beyond the differences that can make us afraid. Fill our hearts with the love of you and make us new again. Open our eyes afresh to our part in your love for the world, that as one body we may sing your praise, serve the needy and seek the lost. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And loving God, we pray this morning for your church around the world in its different traditions and interpretations. We pray for all who lead, thinking this morning of Her Majesty the Queen, Archbishops Justin and Stephen, and our bishops from wherever we are gathered, praying locally for bishops Paul and Sarah, please add your bishops from where you are. And Lord, I thank you for all of our leaders here in Jarrow and Simonside, Lear and Ordained. I thank you for all who volunteer, all who are staying in touch with one another and offering that vital support. I pray that your church will be a gift wherever it is found, for its people are the treasure. They offer their gifts so freely and their time, not just for the church, but for your mission field too, Lord. Fill all who are part of your church with your Holy Spirit, that we may be a blessing wherever we are. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as the new president settles in in America, Lord, in the United States, we pray for peace and reconciliation, not only in their land, but wherever there is discourse, violence, war, inequality, injustice. We pray for your healing peace. We pray that all human life will be seen with dignity. We pray to an end to cruel practices. We pray to an end of this modern day slavery and trafficking of people. And we pray for a world that will work together beyond this COVID pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Heavenly Father, we lift to you this morning all who are working in our hospitals at this time and in care homes and all our key workers. 
We ask, Lord, that you will give them the resilience and the strength and tenacity they need and that they will be well supported within their organisations. That we will remember to care for the carers and care for our key workers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And loving God, we pray for anyone who is sick at this time in mind, body or spirit. Praying for all who care for them. And in this parish today, we're praying for John Ellison, Jessica McCaskill, Carrie Waggett, Betty Connor, Doreen Moy, Andrew Garvett, Mrs Hewitt, Sid Harrison, Pat Middleton, Dorothy Macbeth, Stella Matthews, Michael Hughes, Chris Haynes, Margaret Errington, Tom McKenzie, Julie, Josh, Pat Henshaw, John Pike, Matty Karayenan, Anne Taylor, Rod Taylor, Carol Woodfield, Christine, Beatrice Yorston, Wynne Alderslid, Marion, Judith and Jen, Grant and Sheena, Gillian, Elsie Bartram, Jesse Holmes, Reverend Pat Beeling, Karen Hill, Reverend Stuart Hill, John Young, Minnie Johansson, Mavis, Jamie, Harriet Fraser. And in a moment's silence, we lift to you, Lord, those people on our hearts today. May they know your healing presence in their lives, Lord, your comfort and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And loving God, we pray now for all who are very seriously ill. In hospital, hospices, or being cared for by loved ones at home. We pray for anyone for whom today may be their last day. They may be separated from their families. And we pray that you will comfort all who are grieving at this time, Lord. We pray for anyone planning a funeral today or attending a funeral to say that final goodbye. We pray for anyone for whom a memorial falls at this time. And Lord, we ask that you gather together in your loving arms all those we love but no longer see. Let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. And our collect for today Eternal Lord, 
our beginning and our end, bring us with the whole creation to your glory, hidden through past ages and made known in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And believing the promises of God, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May Christ, who sends us to the nations, give us the power of his Spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And thank you for joining me today. I just wanted to share something with you, actually, because I've been on a lot of courses and, and I've got things next week as well. But I went on um, a course for people wanting just to get started with live stream to see if I could improve the quality. I'm, I'm not going to use this. I'll go back to the one on me. Clearly, it's, it's not working uh, as, as I had hoped. So I've done two. I did the beginner's course. And then I did, oh, it's very technical, yesterday. Um, and I had to admit, you know, I'm with people who know all about cameras and sound and mixing and, and all of this. And I said, it's not my skill set, really, which is, which is true. That's OK. I know how to work bits, but I'm not a technician, not an engineer. And somebody said, well, you need to get some assistance or an assistant who will tell you when you don't sound right or it doesn't look right or you've got the camera in the wrong place. And I said, I haven't got anybody like that. I haven't got anybody that can do that at the moment. Well, quite clearly, I've got a good half a dozen. So thank you for um, flagging that up, that there was an issue. I'm sorry I was on a different screen so I couldn't see your comments as they came through. But it is a two-way thing. I'd love to get to the point perhaps where we're doing something on Zoom and we can all chip in and we can all pray together. So if you think that's something you'd like to try, if you're not already on Zoom, I'm offering to help people physically get onto Zoom. Because Lent isn't very far away and Lent gives us an opportunity for a prayer group or a study group or a space to reflect. And I think the place for that is probably Zoom so that you can have more than one voice, more than one talking head. So I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you for going, no, louder louder turn it up so i don't know what you're doing today i don't know whether you have an active day a quiet day whether you're indoors outdoors indoors most of the time i'd just like to say i love worshiping with you this is just wonderful i've been saying morning prayers for oh gosh well over 10 years 15 years 16 years and for most of that time I said it alone and it's just so much nicer to pray alongside others oh international Lent group could be Tracy Williams I think we need to get a few of us on zoom I know about half of you can do this I'm not so sure about the other half of you but we can figure it out we can do it over the phone and i can talk you through the process so do let me know about that um that's what i was going to say 
Whatever you're doing today, remember God loves you very much. You are precious in his sight. And so is everybody else you will meet today, whether everybody knows it or not. So let me send you on with God's blessing. The next service on our page will be 10 o'clock on Sunday and then back 8 a.m. on Monday. So may God bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you this day and always and grant you his peace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit remain with you and those who you love this day and always. Amen. So have a, a fabulous Friday, whatever you're doing. Take care, look after yourselves, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Stay safe.